Aries, welcome to your intimate tarot reading. I hope you're well. I hope you are fabulous. If you're new to the channel and you'd like to know why I read intimate tarot, specifically sexual energy, it will be outlined for you in the description box as a heads up. If you are indeed that Aries who is sensitive around the topics of sexual energy, sexual identification, sexual exploration, you name it, I want you to go ahead, feel free, pass this one up. I will see you in two weeks. I don't want you to watch the message. I would never want you to watch anything that crosses your values because you will take nothing from it. And that includes any and all tarot types, yeah? I understand the sexual thing. It can be very sensitive to some folks and it makes them uncomfortable. I understand. It's not everyone's cup of tea. I, however, I look at it because I understand all energy is of value. All energy is important. All energy has a role and a play in our lives. So therefore, it's worthy of exploration. And I operate from that principle of the more you know. Sexual energy is just but one more energy type within us, around us, influencing us. No matter how little room we give it or how much room we give it, no matter how we label ourselves or what we think our sexual energy is like, it's still there nonetheless. So therefore, it's worthy of exploring the more you know. It affects you as an individual. Therefore, it's going to affect your relationships in some way to some degree. And the more that we act like we don't know what it's about or we disinclined from it, okay, fine. We devalue it or we put a lot of value on it. You need to know. You're a human being. You're walking around in the world. You need to know what your energy is up to and how it's influencing you. If it is important to you, you should know that. And if it's not important to you, you should know that too. That kind of stuff. That's why we're here. That's why we're all here, really. We just want to know. Mm. Tears. I had to switch over to coffee. Sad just was interesting, but whoo boy, that was a solid 90. I think that was a solid 90. 90 minutes. Which brings me to a good point. Intimate tarot tends to be some of my longest message types. And that's because, guess what? Surprise, surprise, sexual energy tends to be the most neglected. They are like, oh, that's uncomfortable, so I'm just going to say it doesn't matter. And then guess what happens? We understand, no matter how painfully, or no matter how long over time, we often learn the hard way. Yes, indeed. It was important after all. So, let me tell you, honey. This is what I anticipate as someone who does sexual energy readings. It's like taking the car to mechanic and you know you're overdue. <laughs> you know you overdue. And they're going to be like, <laughs> you thought you were just coming in for an oil change today. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, boy. Your to-do list just grew like three times as long. <laughs> That's what it's like for me to read Intimate Tarot. Oh, boy. Oh boy, people are really overdue in their sexual and their sexual energy, their understanding of it, and what the hell's going on. And let me tell you, for some reason, your crosswatcher audience has increased lately, and that seems to be a question I get a lot. What is going on with Aries? What do you mean what's going on with Aries? Ask your Aries. <laughs> Now and again, I'll get that question. Taurus has the worst. Notorious. I'm sorry. They do. They just straight up do. I've been doing this a long time. Taurus has the most notorious cross watchers I've ever seen. It's almost like they're proud. It's almost like they're proud cross watchers. Yeah, I watch. Yeah, cross watch Taurus. Yeah, I do. I'll have you know that I do. And here are my thoughts on that. They get deleted. And Scorpio has their fair share. I'd say they're right up there. Maybe second. And yours has been picking up lately. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on, but I have seen, slowly but surely, the Aries Collective shift a bit more in positive directions, making changes, standing by their decisions. Good. I'm very happy to see that for you, always. Um, you are, of course, Cardinal Fire. If you did not know that about your sign, that means you're meant to move forward before other people. You're meant to show that level of determination, fortitude, and resolution before most other people, even Leo. Okay. So... I'd like to see that. And for Aries, your intimate fire is very precious to you. It's very sacred to you. And it's one of the things that supplies your own sense of rocket fuel, honey. So, let's see if we can clear up some questions for some folks. How you doing? Show me that Aries sexual energy, please. Show me. Show me that Aries sexual energy. Show me that Aries sexual energy. Show me that Aries sexual energy. Show me. Show me that Aries. I have no idea what I see, honey. I have no idea. It's across the board. And it's case in point. It's why I read sexual tarot. I mean, Scorpio's was interesting, and it defied the normal, uh, well, defied the normatives for sexual energy. Just take a look at Scorpio's. They probably hated it because it was so 
focused on a friendship outside of sexual energy. But again, it was just another representation of it and how versatile sexual energy can be. I mean, it was case in point, you know? Yes, show me that area sexual energy. Show me that area sexual energy. Show me. Ooh, let's get another one there. Come on. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't. My name's Christina. Hi, welcome to the channel. I'm a little different. Happy to be so. Welcome to Sassy Scorpion Tarot. What's going on, please? Show me that Aries sexual energy. Show me that Aries sexual energy. What's going on? Hmm. We're going to build your baseline real quick. Take it resonates, leave it does not. Reverse energy as it applies. Cross watch the same. Just because it says Aries in the title doesn't mean it's for you. It might have been two years ago, it might be two years from now, but it may not be today. Okay. If it doesn't resonate at all, that's perfectly normal. Check out the placements or I'll catch you on the next one. No offense taken. Remember to separate yourself from a message if it's not for you. Yeah. You know who kicked this off? Sad. And I promise you there's been many a shuffle between yours and theirs. Plenty. Many. That happened in between sessions. Never mind what you see on camera. So, if you have Sag in your chart, check those out. Ooh, it's a good thing I got that coffee. I'm gonna need it. Ten of Cups, crossing you. You guess the pentacles? Oh, ooh. Oh, okay. We got some tricky energy here. <laughs> what is going on? Aries, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> no wonder you got cross watchers popping off all the time. <laughs> You were in something very intense, just like Sag was. Started off with that same devil energy, and in sexual tarot, that devil is exactly that. It's intense. Sexual energy is the kind that claws at you and makes you feel raw and intense, and what the hell's going on? And oh my god, this is too much at one time. And it becomes a little addictive. It becomes a little drama, uh, especially if it's unrequited that I saw specifically for Sag, their sexual energy with their person was hugely unrequited, so it just added more tension, more fuel to the fire. Uh, there was no alleviation of that sexual energy, so it kept the tension going, it kept the drama going, there was actual love behind it, yes, of course there was, but when it was caught up in the intensity and the drama, neither person could feel it very well. Healthy. Fast forward, Ten of Cups, you're showing me emotional harmony. Ace of Pentacles is crossing you. You don't know necessarily that you need a new beginning or you want to keep going with what you already have. In other words, it went from unhealthy to healthy with somebody. So that's good. Yes. So you're either not looking for a new opportunity or you just want to continue on in your investment in what looks like a current healthy, happy, emotionally, sexually balanced relationship. And then I got someone around you who's kind of pissed off. <laughs> but spiritual. Or it's the power sign. So here we have Capricorn and then we also have Taurus. So we your person has five of wands. Their energy towards you is a little pissed off. A little sexually frustrated. Five of wands and sexual tarot is sexual frustration. But the Hierophant. Again. Sag has had that contradiction as well. Strong, powerful energy. But irritation, sadness, and pain behind it. This person is showing me something similar. Not the same. But the idea is that I got big daddy spiritual energy. I know what's up. My sex is sacred. And I respect that. It should be. Yes, I agree. Sex should be sacred. To thyself and to thy partner. You know, you should know who you can, right? <laughs> like, it should mean something, right? I agree. I don't disagree with that. But why are they mad about it, though? <laughs> that, why are they mad? <laughs> Keep on. All right. Next several months. Five of Cups, Lost Sadness, King of Pentacles, Eight of Swords. Yeah. Okay. There is some remorse here. There is some sadness. Okay. We've got some cups spilled out. Some emotional energy has been spilled out. Some sexual energy has been spilled out. Uh, regret, loss. I never got that when I had the chance. Missed opportunity. Five of Cups often denotes missed opportunity, as well as emotional abandonment. So in this case, we have missed opportunity, emotional abandonment, sexual abandonment, if there ever was anything to abandon to begin with. And then I got somebody here sitting, sitting dead center, that king of pentacles and king queen of pentacles and sexual tarot is the height of sensuality, someone who's very in tune with their body, someone who takes pride in their bodily form, how it's healthy it is, how it's presenting itself, but basically someone who lives through their senses. So this is someone who experiences their sexuality through their senses. 
i.e. sensuality, what we can touch, taste, hear, smell, etc. So just because you're sensual doesn't mean you're sexual, and just because you're sexual doesn't mean you're sensual. But this person is telling me that they are deeply sensual, and somebody's feeling their heart space in terms of sadness and the loss of touch, the loss of senses. Um, and it gets mournful. It gets in a mournful space, a sad space. In the Eight of Swords, though, somebody remains willfully blind um, about their thoughts or their feelings. They won't get in tune with them. Okay. Your strengths is that you prize relationship energy. You're, that's what I saw for you up here in your current energy. Your sexual strengths here is that you do believe in commitment. Good. You believe in commitment. You believe in, again, it's the energy of my sexual energy. My emotional energy is exclusive. Not just anyone can access it. I prefer to build walls with somebody. In other words, security. I need sexual security. I need emotional security. I need to be on the same page. So four of wands is like really the epitome of that same page energy. My wands plus your wands builds structure, support, predictable. I know what to expect when I come home. And I expect to be in equal with somebody. So this is same page energy. You want your sexual strengths say, I need to be on the same page with my person. We have to have the same goals. We don't necessarily have to experience sex the same way, but it needs to be of value to us both. If it's not secure, if it's not safe, if I don't know who I'm coming home to, it ain't going to happen. You know, my sex is important to me, and it should be to my partner as well. Exclusive. Obstacles. The hermit. Healing something. Healing something in your sexual energy. Learning things the hard way. That's been a bit of an obstacle. Moving forward, the star in sexual terror, that's beautiful. That's very beautiful. That is the ideal flow of one's intimate waters, both for male and female. Uh, so that means there are no inhibitions, and you're making your, well, sexual dreams come true, if you will. I know that sounds odd, but it's true. If you can have dreams in love, and if you can have dreams in your financial success 3D world, and if you can have dreams in your spiritual self and in your goals, so too is in your sexual energy. We're talking about you acquiring your ideal mate, someone who respects uh, the concept of relationship-oriented sex, emotions, commitment, stability, health, and well-being. You've shown me that a couple of times, and you had to learn something the hard way. But I do believe you're achieving it. Okay. Um, I don't know what all this blindness and sadness is about, but it's looking like you have a healthy turnaround in your future orientation. I'm not necessarily convinced all that is you either. Um, someone here is upset too. So let's check out that devil. All right, let's get cracking. We need some more coffee. Hold on. <laughs> mm. Cheers. All right. Big red. Tarot deck of sexual magic, respectively. Show me that devil, please. And very intense. Very strong sexual desires that were either unrequited or they got taken to an unhealthy, patternized, toxic place. Still very highly sexually charged, but that doesn't mean it was good for us, right? Locked up in a pattern of drama and tension and passion. Um, but that doesn't mean it was healthy, right? We have to learn to separate what's exciting and toxic and addictive from this is healthy and supportive and my sex actually means something with my person. Okay, there's actually love in it. Um, and not something that just feels dangerously strong, right? Because that's not reliable. It's not predictable. It doesn't have um, a healthy, recognizable pattern in the real world. All right? When it's so strong that you can't define it, it starts defining you in sometimes the worst ways. And I'm saying that because you have your hermit in the obstacles. There's something here you had to learn the hard way in order for you to heal. Okay. Show me that devil, please. Show me that devil. Show me that devil. Let's do one more. Show me that devil, please. Like, because right here, your energy is saying, I'm not looking, I'm happy. Nine of Swords, Stress, Six of Cups. God dang it, I tell you what. I tell you what. Again, if you have said, I haven't done Capricorns yet, but I'm just going to go ahead and... Wait, yes I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking next week. 
I'm having to double and triple up the messages so I can have my vacation in peace. So I'm already thinking about next week. No, uh, you check out Caps. I can't remember theirs. I really can't. Um, but yeah, just in case, because they keep showing up too. Seven of Pentacles. Yeah, yeah. Now this one. Yeah, but check out Sagittarius. Uh, again, same, very similar issues. We've got a strong soul bond here. One person doesn't deny it. The other person has a hard time understanding what a soul connection is. Therefore, they don't value it appropriately, and then it gets turned into something toxic. When you don't value a connection for what it is, deeply soul bonded, I care about you, but more than care about you, I can demonstrate it, I can verbalize it, right? If we don't recognize it as it is in reality, we're going to screw it up. So you are telling me through your energetic definition, yes, this is a soul bond here, Christina. I've known this person. I've known them a long time. Six of Cups. I have a unique history. That's what a soul bond is. You two, and it's two people, have an energetic connection that is hard to define. You both experience it. You both feel it. One person here was cognizant of it, and I do. that means aware. That's just a fancy way of saying aware. I believe it was you who was aware of it, but you also were un aware at the same time that whatever this connection was was going into a bad space with the devil. But it was slow growing. So in other words, it was slow growing knowledge. Fuck. <laughs> it's kind of like the literal thought after I don't know how much time has passed. But you two got into some sort of comfortable routine. And I say even, and it's, it's actually an uncomfortable, comfortable routine. Because that devil energy, that sexual energy is so intense, it's so tight, it's so wound up. But you both got used to it in some way over a long period of time. The Seven of Pentacles. You both got comfortable in your discomfort. Does that make sense? You both got com and then it stopped being so comfortable as you be got increasing awareness of the situation, Nine of Swords. It's like, uh, <laughs> I'm attracted to this and it don't feel right. It's just now dawning on me. It took a minute to get there, but it was you that was aware of it. It was you that was aware of it. It's like, fuck. That's almost a literal translation here. Fuck. I know this person. I know them really well. I love them. Six of Cups is love. It is. You cannot have a Six of Cups and not love that person to some degree. So, love is love. Let's try not to give it a quantity. Love is love. You understood over... You understood over a long period of time that you love this person and that they mean something to you. Very much so. But it, for that very reason, it stressed you out, Nine of Swords. Oh, shit. Where have I found myself in this connection? Because it feels really intense in all the worst ways instead of something that's good and loving and healthy and supportive. The tension's way too high in all the wrong ways. And it's been going on for a long time. And it was causing you more mental stress than it was worth. Fast forward. Ten of Cups. <clears throat> Show me that Ten of Cups, please. I don't know how long ago that was, but it was enough to be in your past orientation and that you were showing me that this became disruptive, um, difficult, stressful. But that it took time to get here. So this was a slow brewing, slow acting devil. We have love here and sexual intensity. And it's not starting to feel comfortable anymore. It's shaping. Because the devil's here. It doesn't matter how sweet that soul bond is. It doesn't matter how long you... It doesn't matter how many laughs you've had or drinks you've shared or plates you've shared. Um, with your soul bond, the fact of the matter is given enough time. And everything's unrequited in all the worst ways, or it's not coming together in the way it's supposed to, it's going to start to feel bad, you know? There may not have been a specific trigger. I just know it took time to get there. Don't know how long that dynamic went on. For some of you, it was months to years. Show me this Ten of Cups, please. Show me this Ten of Cups, please. stars ten of swords king of, why does a king of pentacles it doesn't seem to matter who the hell i'm reading he keeps showing up it's starting to piss me off i mean he's a great guy i love the king of pentacles i do sensual 
Sexy, earthy creature. Love it, right? Very hot. Love it. It's great to see him in Intimate Terror. Cool. It's just he's showing up for everybody. Seriously, I can't do a reading without that asshole So I love that guy. Don't, it's not an asshole. It's just, why is it always there? <laughs> I want to see the King of Wands, too. I want to see more of the King of... Where, why does he keep popping up? <clears throat> I don't know. He's in everybody's reading. Well, I guess everybody thinks they're sensual. That doesn't necessarily mean they're sexy, but a lot of people are sensual, sure. You know, loving good music, good taste, and it's it, that all feeds, like, so for instance, like, I'm a bit of a food porn person, and that's part of my senses. In that respect, I am a queen of pentacles. It's like, oh, honey, I, I, <laughs> I like to taste what I taste. And that translates more to just food. You know, that's just an example. So I get it. The King, Queen of Pentacles, they're going to pop up a lot in Intimate Terror, especially if someone's much more comfortable with their sensual side as opposed to their sexual side. Sure. Um, I'm more both myself, but yeah, there you go. Okay. <clears throat> so you have done a fantastic job healing. Okay. Hmm. From what looks like something painful, that ended. And you are really reestablishing your comfort zone. And you seem to be doing well in your emotional support system. I don't know that you're necessarily with somebody, but you've absorbed the cost of pain of ending. Specifically, this you had to heal Ten of Swords from ending this idea that whatever this was had hope attached to it. Quality hope. So, the stars in sexual tarot, I think we can all see what she's doing. She is aiding him and having the best orgasm of his ever known existence. Uh, in other words, the ideal, the ideal release. Uh, and only one person can provide that. She looks calm and steady because she knows that she's the only one who can provide him that level of relief. Uh, that's her power, and she gives it only to him. I know I can only do this for you, baby, and I want to. And that's why he's so relieved. Only she can. So the idea of ideal release, ideal partnership, uh, achieving the stars with somebody... You killed that hope. You've absorbed it. You've done a good job of absorbing that pain. You've done a good job of absorbing that responsibility. I want you to give yourself that credit. Uh, King of Pentacles. <clears throat> Moving on in your resourcefulness. Uh, valuing yourself first. Okay, a strong sense of self-worth, self-care. This is what I value in me. I love myself more than whatever this is. I put a lot of hope. I put a lot of desire and hope. The star is still the star in sexual terror otherwise. It's still hope, the strongest of hope. It's still desire, the strongest of desire. And, but it's also a long-term vision. Everybody wants a long-term vision of their strongest desires. And I tell people all the time, the star is a very worthy path. And it's not till you're on the path, in the words try. It's not till you're actually trying that you understand if that star is right for you. I know you tried to walk the star path with this person, and at some point you stopped. I can no longer attach my highest desires to you. You will not let me satisfy you. And I will not allow you to satisfy me, or otherwise you can't, or you won't. But I gave up either way. So let's not take that lightly. This person meant a lot to you before you stopped trying. At some point you realize whatever this was building up to had become addictive, toxic, tension, and it wasn't going anywhere anytime soon. It was not going to fix itself, and it was most likely just going to chalk up to somebody's repetitive pattern. And you chose to not make it your repetitive pattern. Bravo. But with that full understanding of what it is you sacrificed. There's something in here that says I know what my worth is and my worth is not this. I wanted you to be part of what I understood that worth to be, but you can't or you won't. So you killed it. And it was painful. Not without love, but because you had love. Love for yourself and love for them. You don't want to keep it going, in other words. So now you're rocking the Ten of Cups. I don't know if there's someone else in there with you, but you feel a lot more emotionally balanced. That could just be your support system I'm seeing right now. 
Uh, I don't know. The Ace of Pentacles is crossing. You don't seem to be interested in new. It could be that you are investing in something that already is working for you, especially if you're pulling that kind of energy that says, I'm sorry, I love myself and I know my worth. This no longer includes you. I wanted it to, but it doesn't anymore. So I don't know, but the Ace of Pentacles is crossing. You may not be ready for a new beginning. Or you got something, like I said, going on now that is working, and you just want to keep reinvesting in that. Let's take a look at you. It's a strong thing to stand up for yourself like that and say, yeah, I wanted you. I did. Very much so. I don't deny it. I tried to be your star. But I guess you weren't trying to be mine. Ace of Pentacles. Ace of Pentacles crossing, Ace of Pentacles crossing, Ace of Pentacles crossing. Some of the Ace of Pentacles crossing, some of the Ace of Pentacles crossing. I'm all fired up for you, honey. I'm all fired up for you. Yeah, I got... Mm -hmm. I'm all fired up for you. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm in here with you. I'm in here with you. I got your flow. I do. I got your flow here today. The Magician, the Four of Wands, Ten of... Yes, Aries, I don't know what you got cooking. Keep on. Yes, I was very curious. You were either rejecting any new possibilities or you were investing in something that's already in play. That's what you're doing. God dang, I'm good. Mmm. Mmm. Bitch. Oh, yes. Sorry. I enjoy my work. You know I'm not a male reader, right? <laughs> That's why my, I'm sorry, I love my Aries Collective. My Aries Collective is awesome. My fucking, I, my Aries Collective is the shit, dude. Like, seriously, you, I have the best Aries. Ask any channel anywhere, mine, I have the best Aries Collective. I'm sorry. You guys, you get my energy. You just do. You just understand my energy. You don't give me shit about it. You don't give me judgment for it. I have the best Aries Collective, I swear to God. And it, you know, it doesn't help I have two dominant placements in Aries. And I just, I tell you what, when I'm so happy for you, it's because I can feel the flow of your energy. So I get it. So when I have my little pop moments, you know, Aries is like, hey, Christina's being Christina. So I love that. I love that you guys support me like that. I really do. Because um, when I get really excited for you, I fucking mean it. And I hope you know that. You should. And if you're new to the channel, hi. Real terrors were life and my reactions are real. And I don't know what you're investing in, but you're like, I want more of it. Yes, you do. Whenever you exited this, I don't know when it's on your timeline. I'm sorry, I'm not digging that detail today. I could spin this out for a couple more hours. I ain't got that kind of time. I mean, I have time, but I ain't got that kind of time. Um, I don't know when. At some point on your timeline, when you exed out of this, you crossed over into something else. And you started investing in it, and it felt right almost immediately. That's how you know it's correct. You had years, months, or years of evidence that this wasn't in the flow. And almost instantly, you realized something was in the flow. And now you're saying, uh, I need more of this. So all you're doing with that Ace of Pentacles is that you are continuing to put constructive effort into something that is working. It is relationship-oriented. You tell me the Ten of Cups not once but twice. You are experiencing, if you have not yet, you will relatively soon at the rate that you're going. Emotional and sexual harmony with somebody and it look good and it feel good. Your four of wands was in your strengths. I already defined that for you. You take sexual strength from knowing that you have an exclusive partner that is loyal and dedicated to you and actually gives a fuck. Right? In other words, not random sexual energy. This is why I read Intimate Tarot so people can see how important it is, not the absence of it. Okay, you had strong sexual energy with somebody and look where it got you. Nowhere. Because it wasn't going anywhere. You had years or months of accumulated evidence to see that. All it was doing was stressing you out because it was going like this. Nowhere. It was going in a circle. What we want is the infinity feedback loop. You feed it, it feeds you. But this was you and that devil. Round and round the merry-go-round we go. Now... Look at that. Manifestation. Ten of Cups, Four of Wands. That has legitimacy, relationship consistency, emotional consistency, sexual consistency, all up in there. And we want to keep allowing that energy to get all up in there. As far as it can go. Fuck yeah. It's... Honey, I'm sorry you had to give up your star. You really did see the best in them, despite the fact that you felt the energy and the connection between you two was 
not healthy at the end of the day. But you did give it a damn good shot, and you had really strong hope for it, and that was because of the bond, not the sex. Do you know that, right? You didn't try this hard because of how sexually attracted you were. That was the drama. That was the mask. You tried so hard because it was a soul bond, because you genuinely loved this person. But it got it just wrapped up in all this sound and fury of sexual energy. It never got to the point. The point was the connection. Okay, so whatever this is, I don't know, but it intercepts your timeline fairly quickly. So when you drop that one thing like this, it goes off your grid, something comes through. You see how that works? That's what happened. It's really close in proximity, uh, the overlap here. You drop one thing, it means a lot to you, but it's not right for you, right? It allowed you to move forward into something that is. And now you're telling the universe, more of that, please, more of that. Yeah, more of that, back it on up. I've seen that for you before, back it on up. And so it is, You, it's, it's so beautiful, honey. It's so beautiful, it's giving you an enormous amount of strength and sense of security, emotional security, sexual security, as I said. This actually has somewhere to go, this has something to grow, this actually has a purpose, in other words. Now who's this grumpy person? Show me this five of wands, please. Show me this five of wands. I mean, it could be that. I don't know, but somebody's saying they're they're frustrated, angry, sexually frustrated, most likely, but also the hair font. Trying to be chill about it? I don't know. Um, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't upset me. I, I don't know. I don't know. Show me that five of wands, please. That's Again, that's a very curious juxtaposition of energy. It's, it's, it's a curious juxtaposition. Show me that five of wands, please. This is that person who's like, I'm pissed off, but I'm not going to show it. Hey, what's up? Okay. Show me that five of wands, show me that five of wands, show me that five of wands, show me that five of wands. Show me that five of wands. Six of swords. Moved on. Ace of wands. Five of Wands, oh, okay. They've told themselves to get over it, but they're struggling with it. They still have a lot of unresolved sexual tension with you. Yeah, I would say so. Um, given how your two's connection played out the way it did, I'm sure they do have a lot of unresolved sexual tension when it comes to you. And that's, they're telling me that's all it was about. Therefore, it shouldn't be a problem to leave it behind. It's kind of blunt. Like I said, one of you understood the connection for what it was. One of you understood that there was real love there. The other person, not so much. Guess who the other person is. Um, did they have any kind of love for you? The soul bond in and of itself suggests yes, but if this person chooses not to acknowledge it, then in their mind and in their heart, no, they don't have love for you. Six of Cups automatically implies it. But again, tell that to someone who doesn't understand soul bonds and tell that to someone who spends a lot of time denying what the meaning of the connection is. So they're saying, I'm not frustrated, I've moved on from this Six of Swords. Okay, I understand. Nobody wants to stay angry. Nobody does. I don't like living in anger. I don't like it anyway. Get it. Say what you need to say and move on. You know? But it's, it keeps coming back to anger for this person, and it's attached to their passion for you, Ace of Wands. So not only do they have unresolved sexual tension with you, it's also anger in the general sense. That's five of wands twice. I'm pointing that out. It's five of wands twice. That's a lot of frustration. That's a lot of anger. Pissed off. Six of Swords. I'm going to leave it behind. Whatever. No point in being mad. No point in being mad. Fuck you. There's no point in being mad. It's done. Ace of Wands. Fuck. This person has a natural light switch inside them. It's very passionate. It's very bright. They have very strong callings. They have very strong needs, I believe. And what do I say all the time about fire, guys? As you being a fire sign, you should understand this. You can either have positive fire or you can have negative fire, but there's no such thing as neutral fire. Neutral fire means it doesn't exist. That's me doing this. Okay, that's me. That's neutral fire. There isn't any. 
So, all you have then is smoke. Pipe dreams. Bullshit. Okay? That's like seven of cups. It's fantasy. It's wisps of smoke. So, your fire can either be positive, warming, loving, passionate, embracing, inspirational, man evolved through fire. Or it can be chaotic, and it can burn, and it can hurt. It's positive fire, and there is negative fire. There is no neutral. This person is conflicted with both. Unfortunately, the negative fire is winning. Here's the positive fire. Ace of Wands will always be positive, depending on what you do with it and how well you are informed of your own sexual energy. They're used to resisting what they want, and they're angry with themselves for it. They're angry that they're still attracted to you. They're angry that they never got to resolve their sexual tension towards you. These were all choices they've made. Um, it's a lot of unresolved sexual tension. So somebody can burn bright all day long, but if they don't understand their sexual energy, what it's trying to achieve, what it wants, or they're not in touch with it, or they're in denial about it, the anger and the frustration will exist, and it will be unresolved. So I don't know what this person was hoping to be in connection with you with, but they never resolved it. I don't know either. They keep telling themselves to move on, and then they get mad with themselves when they find that they're still attracted to you. So again, unresolved fire, unresolved tension, and that's within them. It has nothing to do with you. You could not help them solve that puzzle. I know you made yourself available for the connection through love. You played your part in the devil energy. You had strong attraction too. The thing is, is that you realized that over time, it was going in the wrong direction, no matter how much you loved them or the connection. The Hierophant. Their sexual energy towards you says it's spiritual, that it knows better, that it's a higher self, that it can rise above all this. I believe that they believe that, yeah. And I'm sure over enough time and with enough strength of will, they might actually be able to live it. Uh, but they are sexually frustrated, and I think it's, with that much five of the ones, honey, it goes well beyond you. It goes well beyond you. You might get caught up, you might have gotten caught up in somebody's energy, the soul bonded, that constantly lives in this perpetual state of, I want this, no I don't, I want this, no I don't, I desire this, I reject this. Um, I don't know. And again, that's going to create a dramatic devil jerk circle, where it becomes patternized and addictive, and it's, it's no good. Especially when all you desired for this person was the best. You wanted to relieve their tension by all rights, in the beautiful way. E they were more than just an object of desire to you. You really wanted to fulfill them, to soothe them, to ease their tensions. You meant that. You weren't fucking around with that. Not that I saw. And now... I can't help but think that that ship has sailed because you're clearly saying I want more of whatever this is. You're in something else now altogether. I think it's just started, but it has a lot of promise attached to it. By start, by far, it's very secure, emotionally and sexually secure, stable, in other words. And you're saying I want more of that, please. Uh, it might be indeed your new star because that is your outcome. Nine of... Well, dang, man. Four swords. Yeah, this person blocked their fire all the time when it came to you. It's not important. Suspend it. It's not important. Uh, this person's energy is not consolidated. If they understood how important their passion was to them, they would not be this conflicted. Uh, this is that person classically who downplays their fire, their sexual tension. It doesn't mean anything. It's probably just 
some addiction stuff or some attention stuff. Uh, this is someone who is not comfortable with their sexual energy. Uh, they might have a past where their sexual energy has gotten them into trouble. They might have uh, enough experiences like that. You're automatically going to start assuming that your natural passion, your propensity for life, your natural energy is coming from a negative place. It's not an authentic place. It's not your higher self. This is what happens when we downplay our passion and act like it's bad. As soon as you start labeling it as bad, you've had a couple of bad incidences, you're just like, mm, fire equals bad. Mm. Okay. The thing is, in our effort to avoid fire, we still end up burning ourselves. You know why? Because we're not being authentic. That's it. When you're not being authentic, when you don't live for what you actually believe, if you don't live by the fire that ignites you, instead you ignore it, act like it doesn't exist, act like it doesn't impact you, the worse it gets. So this person's got a lot of denial attached to their energy. It, sorry. They do. And then they top it off with that hair font energy spiritually. I'm the hair font. I can rise above all this. It's just a sex feeling. Good luck with that. The people I've met who have the worst problems with sexual energy, the most uncomfortable with their sexual identity, are the ones who give it the least room to be understood. And it's no trip different from anything else. The more you don't understand your mind, the weaker your mind is. The more you don't understand your heart, the weaker your heart is. And the more you don't understand your sex, the weaker your sex is. I'm not saying this person can't throw a good dick or throw a good vagina. I'm sure that they can, okay? Uh, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that the more you try to ignore it, the bigger your weakness gets. And this person has weakness surrounding fire, passion. And then they try to cop out on their higher sense of self saying, I'm above all this bullshit. Then why is the conflict here? You're not above anything having to do with wayward sex or passion or fire or getting burned. The more you act like you're above it, the more likely you are to be burned by it. The more you are afraid of something, the more likely you are to reenact it. And this person's terrified of what they feel and the intensity of it, not just with you, in other areas of their life. Anything where they might feel passion or intrigued or, huh, that could be interesting. And they start to suppress it almost immediately. That's a lot of built up sexual frustration. That's a lot of built up pressure. They never Nine of Wands in this deck, it's a really good depiction of that frustration. He's covering her mouth. You've said too much. That way he doesn't have to say anything at all. In other words, he doesn't want to say what he really feels. He doesn't want to say what he really wants to do. He's not going to allow himself to say or do those things, so he wants her to shut up. That way he doesn't feel obligated to say and act in kind. She wants something and she knows it's in him. That's what she's trying to do. She's like, talk to me. I've told you how I feel. You share now. And he's like, shut up. I can't. And that's suppression. That's a fire suppression. Five of wands, five of wands, resistance of what we feel, etc. And they have such beautiful fire in them. But for the most part, because it goes un underutilized, not understood, misunderstood, pushed away with the hanged man. I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to ignore it. And not only that, I'm going to put the cherry on top and say it's authorized for my spiritual self to ignore all my sexual instincts altogether. So now we have the justification of the hair font. That's his biggest catch 22 uh, by far is that the more this person delays it, acts like it doesn't, isn't important, doesn't live through it, won't allow it and will not allow themselves to understand it, the more trouble they get themselves in. Oh, and four swords, uh, masturbation. So they masturbate a lot, and that's fine. Actually, masturbation is very healthy, except it's not meant to supplement entirely our sex life. No. Uh, this person takes their sexual needs and tries to gratify themselves through masturbation, which again is healthy. I strongly encourage masturbation. It helps you understand your body. It helps you understand your needs 100%, but it's meant to be in terms of self-gratification, like meditating or even praying. It's meant to be you taking your energy to a good place just for you in that moment, in that time. That's why masturbation's healthy. It becomes unhealthy when this person cannot express themselves sexually at all, so they're just like, I'll just masturbate, it's easier. 
In fact, it just makes things worse. It makes them feel even more isolated in their passion, and it makes them feel like they can express themselves to other people appropriately, even less. They are very good at denying, like I said, the shit that turns them on. It's almost like they enjoy it. That's that's self that's self inflicted, and that's not good. Uh, unfortunately, you got caught up in this person's pattern because here's the time, here's the pattern, and here's the bond between you two. And it is a soul bond, and it stressed you out to realize what this had become over time. Um, like I said, you were aware of your love, and you wanted to give them everything that would soothe them and ease their soul and ease their body. Um, but this person does not allow themselves to go towards what they want. Uh, why? There's a thousand reasons why. I don't know. They are showing the hair font. Perhaps they're in a commitment. In which case, they are grossly uh, sexually dissatisfied in that. Uh, why else would they be so frustrated? You know, This person might have, again, I've been using that analogy more and more often lately, like a bucket, and they've got a hole in the bucket, and so their emotions are spilling out, their sex is spilling out, and it's being unattended to, and there's just not enough to refill that bucket because it's got a perpetual fucking hole in it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, honey. I don't know. But that's a lot of negative sexual energy that is unfulfilled, unrequited, frustrated as hell. And they relieve it sometimes, but it doesn't hit the core of who they are. And that's because they are sexually dissatisfied with anything else. The core of who they are is not being fed. Okay. And that's what happens, again, when you downplay sexual energy like it doesn't matter, it's not important, it will come back to bite you in the ass and not in the way you want. Okay. Show me that Five of Cups, please. Show me that Five of Cups. Other than that, I would say you yourself look like you're in a very good place, so I want you to continue to stay in that. I cannot emphasize this enough. Balanced and healthy. Balanced and healthy. You said you want more of it. Uh, so, I want, so what is this Five of Cups about then? Show me this Five of Cups, please. <clears throat> Show me that five of cups, please. Show me that five of cups. Show me that five of cups. Show me that five of cups. I'm not saying that this... You see, here's that conflict. What matters is the relationship. It's not the sex. Okay, then why are you this fucking conflicted, miserable, and empty inside? Because your sexual energy means nothing? Or because it means something and you just don't want it to because it's not convenient? You know? It's like, if, if they're in something and they're this sexually twisted up and unhappy with it. Yeah, so much for that belief system that sex doesn't matter. See, this is what happens when people run around ignorant. I'm sorry, that's ignorance. You don't get to say sex isn't important and be that fucking miserable and angry and suppressed. I mean, you can do, but you see where it gets you. That's what happens when you live a lie. All right, Queen of Swords, Queen of Cups, the Two of Swords, okay, that's fine. That's very good. I see that is you. You're recouping fairly well. Um, about the end, you're still confused about how things happened or went down with this uh, because it did hurt. Five of Cups, you made that very clear. You love this person, but they are of the past. You are still cleaning up and clearing up that past energy. You are still emotionally trying to understand it. You are still trying to sexually understand it and how it got to that point, and you are remorseful of it. Um, there are things that you wish you could say and do to take it back or to fix it, but you kind of understand that you can't, that you're always just going to have to be kind of confused about this connection and why it ended up the way it did. Uh, again, that takes a certain level of responsibility and maturity to understand. It's just not, it, it does. It takes a huge willingness to trust the universe and be like, there's things about this I will never understand. And there's just going to be things that are left undone. And I have to accept the fact that it hurts and it's always going to hurt. Um, this is just one of those things I have to regret. But that doesn't mean I can't learn from it. Um, Five of Cups is regret. Missed opportunity. I lost feeling for this. I lost time for this. I lost sex for this. Whatever it was. Um, but you, your, heart, your fullness of your heart with the Queen of Cups is coming back. The fullness of your mind with the Queen of Swords, heavy feminine energy here doesn't have to be, is coming back into working order. And there's a there's a an acceptance, a painful acceptance that you're just you're not going to know everything. And it confused you, and it's going to take time. Um, I'm terribly curious about that hermit being in your obstacles. Do you feel that you had to forgive yourself? 
Do you feel that you it's taking you time to forgive the remorse of this? That kind of thing. Because he's all about time, the hermit. He's not big on being rushed. Okay. But your energy is rising back into a place of fullness. Okay. Now, show me this uh, King of Pentacles, please. Show me that King of Pentacles. Show me that King of Pentacles. Show me that King of Pentacles, please. Show me that King of Pentacles. Show me that King of Pentacles, please. Show me that King of Pentacles. Show me that King of Pentacles. Show me that King of Pentacles, please. Page of Pentacles, Death, Ace of Pentacles. Oh, wow. That's very solid of you. Yeah, okay, I got it. I got it. You're very clear about this, and I don't dispute it. Um, I don't think anybody in their right mind would. They're saying, as the King of Pentacles, which I already saw for you back here, you're still highly sensual, you're still highly protective, you're still highly resourceful, steady, loyal. And um, you accepted and absorbed the responsibility of the star path closing. It looks like it was under your design. And you are now pursuing something that is Ten of Cups, Four of Wands oriented. Don't look back. Don't apologize. Continue to manifest it. It's healthy. You're saying the same. Um, as that King of Pentacles energy, you understood what a dead investment something proved to be. You might have some Scorpio in your chart. So we understood something to be a poor investment that was low functioning and somebody was not contributing enough to it. That's a very low level contribution. It's the most basic form of investment and that couldn't be achieved. That's no more. You are now focusing once more on the Ace of Pentacles. You're telling me I'm not going to rock the boat on this. I know what I'm manifesting. I know I'm going to keep pulling this in. So I don't know who this is, but you're like, I'm going to keep pulling this in. Uh, one you understand is a dead end. The other one you understand has possibility, fruitfulness, and stability on it. Again, stability of home, stability of sex, stability of emotions. That's the name of the game here. You want to have it all. I know you had a huge spiritual connection to... Let me make this clear to you. You cannot show me the devil with a six of cups and not tell me that that connection is not significant. Yes, it fucking is. It was a very strong connection, spiritually, sexually, or emotionally. But when it goes into a bad place, it goes into a bad place. That doesn't mean it's for you. And it may not be for you in future. It may be for you in future. I don't know. We're not in the future. All I can say is that it's not for you right now. Two people have to know what they want at the same time. You can't say, I wanted this, fuck them, and not pay a price for it. You can't do that. That's what energy contradiction is, and this person had that well established before you entered the scene. You got caught up in it. This was already like that within them before you hit the scene. And you cannot make somebody realize that they fucked over a six of cups, or they fucked themselves over from a soul bond that just wanted to give them everything. They're just seeing it as a sex function that they have to control. That's on them, that's not on you. So no, you're keeping on with this Ace of Pentacles that again introduced itself sometime after you broke from this. Um, they're actually not that too far apart. I can't really, I can't see the line. I can't see the line. That means it happened relatively close. And no, it can't be third party by default, uh, especially if this person was never in it heart-wise. So you can't cheat on them. <laughs> you just can't. Um, this is not something that you were cheating on. They had to have been in there with you, and you would have to have been on the same page for it to have been third party. Um, so no, it's not. You were trying to remain loyal to the love of the connection, but they themselves didn't recognize it. So, no. I'm just saying those time. So if any of you had any reservations about mm, I'm entering into something as soon as I ended this, is that bad? The answer is no. Um, there was no commitment here. There was no loyalty to the connection here. For you, yes. For them, not so much. It was just a sex thing they had to deal with or suspend or control. Okay? That's not a relationship that you're cheating on. Uh, but no. Eight of Swords, please. Eight of Swords. It wasn't a real authentic relationship. The connection was. The relationship in the 3D was not. Show me that Eight of Swords, please. Show me that Eight of Swords. What is this willful blindness about? Show me that Eight of Swords, please. Uh, you seem to really be giving yourself structurally the best part of you to somebody. 
and a dynamic that feels incredibly healthy to you. So I want you to keep on. I haven't seen them who, who they are. You're just telling me, Christina, this is going really well. And I, that, that's my Ace of Pentacles, not this Page of Pentacles that wouldn't do anything. Uh, this, this Ace of Pentacles, that's my business. And you seem to be giving the best of yourself to it. Like your energy, stand up, do right for whatever this is. Um, this is like the, the strongest, smartest looking Aries I've seen. I mean, your energy stands up so sharply for this, it's not even funny. Um, you tried to give that to them, but there you go. Three of Swords, King of Wands, Strength, Leo. What a Leo energy right there. King of Wands and Strength. Doesn't have to be Leo. Three of Swords, Pain, Blindness. I just see you getting stronger. Your passion feels a lot better. You seem to be a lot less confused now that you have direction, which is very true for fire signs. Once you understand that your fire is positive oriented, you become less confused, less murky. You're recovering from pain and the confusion of, I saw that confusion back here. You're kind of saying to the universe, I don't understand why this had to happen. I regret it. I regret it. Um, and I'm sorry, it's a missed opportunity. I tried to do my best to give it what it needed and it wouldn't take it or accept it or see me for what I am. It treated me like something else. And that's not my fault, but I also have fault. I agree. I do. You played into the devil dynamic. You even recognized it here at the Seven of Pentacles. You played into it for a long time. So you recognize your part. That's part of the health. That's part of growing. You're just confused about how it happened at all. That's because you loved him. So you probably blinded yourself about what was going on. Eight of Swords is willful blindness, lest we forget. I don't want to acknowledge what's going on, so I'm just not going to see it. And it's that same blindness that got you into pain with the Three of Swords. Again, that took time. It's going to take you time to recover. Okay? It will get easier. And as it does, you get bolder. And your positive fires out, so you become, it's, you stop emphasizing so much structure and legitimacy. I understand, honey, I understand. When you come from something like this, your energy is going to swing in the opposite direction. I need stability. I need consistency. I need to know what the hell I'm doing. And once you get into that place that, and you start to feel safer, your natural fire energy is going to start to come out more and more. And confident, structured, bold and you're starting to trust your passion again which is good this person doesn't trust their passion so don't be like them you're supposed to trust your passion you're trusting your passion more and that willful blindness is going away okay very good your strengths are is that I never feel so sexually and emotionally secure as when I'm in a relationship you understand that this was not a relationship this was a situation ship okay that's what I'm saying. So if there's any concern about the timeline overlapping where you exited this, I promise you there was no commitment here or loyalty to you or to this connection. Just a very strong, unrequited desire. Um, to you it was more than that, I know. And I strongly suspect it was for them too, but only they can learn that. And as if they want to. Ignorance is bliss. So they probably won't. Four of Wands. Show me that Four of Wands. Show me that Four of Wands. Again, if it was really just a piece of ass, they wouldn't have to stress out that fucking hard. Show me that Four of Wands, please. Show me that Four of Wands. 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 I'm sorry. There, there's no excuse. You can't play ignorant. They knew what you were, they were, you were trying to give them. They knew. They knew. You know, tell me it's not a big deal it doesn't mean anything. It's just a sex thing. If that was true, you wouldn't be so mad. And it's like, what is missing in your own life that puts you into this position time and again? I'll tell you what happens. You don't live authentically. You don't trust your fire. You don't trust your passion. You're not going to trust you. Everything, I will say this until I throw up and I'm blue in the face. Everything begins with the self. If you don't trust you and what you're doing, why you're doing it, 
you're not going to ever trust yourself in anything else. This person's missing something. They gotta, they gotta find that out for themselves. Queen of Wands, beautiful. Eight of Cups, Six of Pentacles. Okay, okay, okay. All right, very good. Um, you have completely emotionally detached from balancing acts. There's something here where it's like you're feeling increasingly secure in whatever this relationship is, and you are no longer putting emotions into balances, certain balances, others, I'm assuming it's those, any sort of false balances or anything that's not emotionally available, you are no longer balancing with. It's, I'm only putting the best of my energy into something that actually has meaning. So in that, you're getting a lot of your energy back. You're not wasting or spending your energy in the wrong areas anymore. So again, the pentacles, what you can spend, time, energy, and effort. No more, no more putting yourself into emotionless situations or emotionally unavailable situations because it's not really a fair balance, is it? You're taking increasingly more strength from whatever this relationship is that you're forging. Show me the hermit, please. It's the obstacle. It's been a hard road for you to examine these things. To understand them. To understand your sex. Your part in all this. How your own sexual energy has affected you uh, now and in past relationships. Because again, the hermit is depicted with the lantern. Okay, looking back on the path. How far you've come. Where you had to and why. Some of that hermit, please. Some of the hermit, please, and the obstacles. The stars, the nine of swords, the fool. Yeah, if you're going to open up to a star pathway, it shouldn't feel so stressful. I agree. You associated stress with this particular star that was this person. As much as you wanted to give them everything, it cost you way too much to do so or to try to do so. I should say they didn't actually let you. They wanted to, but they didn't let you. And again, in order to accept what you were trying to give, they had to have known that they loved you um, and that they cared about this connection beyond what they could get from it sexually. Okay. That's a lot of suspension, a lot of suspension, a lot of I'm too far above this for it to give any notice. It's not important. I've been through it before. Yeah. And they still hadn't learned from it. So repeating behaviors. Uh, the star, nine of swords, the fool. Um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You really had to learn to forgive yourself. I, I told you that was under question. And I don't want you to take it as an insult or a challenge. It's just real life. It's true. Honey, you have to understand this was more than just intense sexual energy to you. You really had heart in this. You really did love this person. Um, and you're stressed. You're stressed about how you tried to make this person the stars or give them the stars, their ultimate relief. You wanted to be that person to do that for them. Um, but with a long-term vision attached to it, okay, uh, it caused you a lot of stress. And you had to forgive yourself the fool to exposing yourself to it. Okay? You don't... This, this is where I need you to ease up on your energy, okay? And this forgiveness thing is between you and you, not them. You. It's been your obstacle, not theirs. Yours. We all have parts to play. Okay? You even saw it from the very beginning. How long have I been doing this? How long have I been caught up in this dynamic? So yeah, you're going to have moments, but at least you're taking responsibility. I just don't want you to kick your ass so hard about forgiving yourself. You wouldn't I have to emphasize this with the stars, honey. It's not like the sun. The sun is easy. You've heard me say it a thousand times. You get to choose to be happy. You get to choose to walk outside your door and feel the sunshine. The stars require sacrifice. You took a risk. You exposed yourself to someone over and over again because you really did see the best in them. And you saw yourself, more importantly, giving the best of who you are to them because of love, not sex. You got caught up in a sexy, shitty dynamic, but the love was real. For you, it was. Them, I don't know. And neither do you. 
They don't know. Why would you know? But actually, yes, going back to my point, Six of Cups, you cannot have Six of Cups without love. But the thing is, it doesn't mean love to somebody who refuses to recognize it or allow themselves to feel it. So you're going to get what you get anyway. But you knew. You're going to have to forgive yourself. You, you, you didn't know that that star was for you until you started exposing yourself to it. I think the reason you're upset the most is because of how long you did it. Not that you did it at all. How else would you have known? But how long? I don't know how long you were the fool for this person, but it caused you more harm than good. Okay? And that's something that is going to take time for you to forgive yourself. And by all rights, you're on a new star. And I see you reaching for it. Very much so. Very active. Very active. And as far as I can tell, very healthy. I want you to keep on with that. So I don't know who this is to you, but they look good. They look good for you. They look good around you. They seem to be really evoking the best in you, what you tried to give to this. Um, somebody's actually experiencing it with you in a good, healthy, positive way. And that's all I care about. Some of that star, please. Some of that star. Some of that star. And if this hasn't intersected your timeline yet, it will soon, I believe. Show me. Some of the stars. Some of this new star, please. For Aries. Someone whom you can actually, God forbid, release your waters on. And you can release theirs in a beautiful way. Making each other sing. Mm-hmm. Among other things. Okay, Six of Wands, confidence is up, Queen of Swords, you're determined to move into this direction, you've made up your mind about it, yes, very good. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Your energy's back on point. I don't even know what the point of this is, I'm sorry, I'm just obligated to report it. Yeah, they watch. And that's all they're ever going to do is watch. I think part of you knows this or suspects it. Yeah, it was just sex. I'm sure. It's a problem with that lack of insight. Then you back it up with the hair font. All cards have pros and cons. The hair font's beautiful energy. He has one of the best pros and also the one of the worst cons. If he really wants to believe something is true despite the evidence saying otherwise, he'll believe it. They really believe they're detached from all this and it doesn't mean anything. Because they said so. When in fact being detached from their sexual energy and the role it plays and how important it actually is in this person's life is what got them into this trouble to begin with. I don't know why they're so restless and unhappy. But they allow themselves to be. Making connections with the wrong people, insisting it's right, rejecting the right people saying it's wrong. Yeah, they're watching. And that's, like I said, with that kind of justification, but very little insight, you're going to believe what you want to believe. And they're not going to do anything but watch. It's not your problem. They see you moving on with pride and confidence on your new star pathway. I can't quite see it. I just know someone's harmonizing with you really well in all the ways that count. They see you as being successful and you are achieving and that you seem to be doing very well. I don't know why they're watching you other than the fact that they have a lot of unresolved issues within themselves and therefore with you. And they're never going to resolve them so long as their energy remains, insisting remains on big picture ignorant with small energy on the present day to justify their beliefs. In other words, not willing to learn. They'll just end up repeating this again. It's somebody else, but just not with you. If it helps you, you did love them. If it helps you, you really did see the best in them. And you saw yourself giving the best of yourself to them. Until something else entered your life that actually said, oh, this is healthy. And it's stable. And it feels right. Instead of wrong.
they had all the elements with you to suggest it was right, but they insisted on saying it wrong, so they got the output they deserved. I want you to focus on this Ace of Pentacles. You seem to be thriving well. You have some sort of developing relationship with somebody, and it's quite strong. It's beautiful. Um, no, I'm sorry that they're they're watching you. They're still attracted to you. They know that, even if they resent it. They just don't understand why they're still watching. And again, it's that lack of insight. It's like, put the fucking thoughts together, bro. It was more than sexual attraction. <sighs> Sis, who the fuck ever. Okay, I'm very curious. Uh, these two are so close together. I, I, it's It's hard saying the, the dividing line, it, it feels like as soon as you exited this, something introduced itself that immediately gave you no question about its intentions. It gave you no question about its feelings. It, it gave you no question about its sex. It was, it had corners put on it almost immediately. So something like this lacks corners. I can, I'm sorry, this is my own internal dialogue. I've been doing this a long time. I see energy in terms of corners, development. This had very little corners attached to it, except for that Six of Cups. Memories, time, soul bond. After that, the, the corners got very fuzzy. In other words, there wasn't a real relationship here. The bond was. The bond was real, the love was real. But without the 3D to define it, it became something not good. And then you cross from that, accepting it, the responsibility for it with the Ten of Swords, into something that immediately had corners attached to it. And uh, this is how I see energy. It, it's very different through my eyes. <laughs> Ten of cups twice. There's a corner. Another corner. Four of wands twice. Another corner. Another corner. And then right in the middle of it was you showing me king of pentacles twice. Showing me ace of pentacles twice. So your energy not only started to have sharp definition, it had consistency within it. So when I'm telling you, whatever this is, is real. It's not full of shit or bullshit. It's not wasting your time. It's actually reciprocated, fair, and strong. That's exactly what that means. It has no confusion, and the intentions are on the upfront, visible, and you understand it. That means it communicates with you, its emotions, its intentions, and its sex, all together. In other words, it gives you plans. It gives you something to work with constructively, and it gives you no room for confusion. To this day, and sometime in the future, you're still going to admit to being confused over this and still not understanding it and why it played out the way it did. But this gives you no questions at all. So that's how you know somebody is right here like this. There are no room for questions when you move in sync and you're on the same fucking page. When you're not on the same page, you are moving in different directions and nobody knows what the other person's doing or what they want or why they're doing it. So... These two, like I said, as here is this not great one. Once you cut it off, the other one started to move in, okay? On a positive upward trajectory. Uh, so that's what I'm very curious about. So for some of you, it's soon, if it hasn't happened yet, because it's in your current energies with, fuck, yeah. Within a couple of days, like I said, if it hasn't, whatever that is that's proposing a healthy energy with you hasn't introduced itself yet, it's just a matter of time. And, and timeline in tarot is not precise, guys. It's not supposed to be. When I say soon, that could be months. But this is like a couple, I'm telling you, they're so fucking close. One drops off and that could have been a month ago and this new one comes in. Okay, so we could be talking weeks, months, or days apart from the actual act itself, where one drops off and the other one picks up. That's how close it is. I can't see it. Um, but some of you, if you haven't met this person yet, you will soon. Uh, your biggest confirmation by far, something might have significant might have happened last January or this upcoming January. Uh, that's for some of you. January for some of you might be some sort of anniversary marker or clean slate energy, as often proposed at the start of the year. This is so comp This is tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. For some of you, I'm looking at future orientation. You haven't let this go, but you might next January. And then it's just a matter of time before this comes in. See, all I know is this is a critical piece. You have relinquished this willfully. Something didn't come along and save you. You relinquished this 
and then almost immediately something comes in. That's it's just the order. It's just the order. That's how I see it. It's summertime. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's sooner rather than later. But something significant might have gone down last January, man, where you had some really strong insight about this dynamic. Stay positive about it. And uh, yeah, don't wait. Don't wait. Just don't wait. Don't ever wait. Don't ever wait. And in this dynamic, you're going to realize how long you were waiting. Uh, last fall might have been important as well. Upcoming fall might be important, but most of it's concentrating within days to weeks. Within the summertime. Something is banking within a couple of weeks. Something is banking energetically of significance, either last January or last fall. It could be upcoming as well. I just don't see it that way, but yeah. Okay. Okay, intelligent. Yeah, keyword. Somebody here is intelligent. You, one of your entry energies or exiting energies, doesn't matter. You know, you can be smart all you want, but stupid is stupid. There you go. You're either aware or you're not aware. You either insist something doesn't matter when it does, and then you get what you get. Or you're like, you know what, this actually is important to me. And maybe it's just more than my dick pointing at the Aries. Or my veg. Hmm. No, it can't be that. Uh, yeah, but now somebody here is very intelligent, and it's the medallion of Gemini. So I think for some of you, uh, your new connecting partners, your long-term partners, the healthy ones might be Gemini. It's just coming across that way. You know, yeah, why not? I love a good Gemini. I do. Love that Gemini energy. All right. Uh, Pisces, goldfish. And then also, of course, swimming with the emotions with them, not against them. That would be in reverse. E, the letter E, grapes. Somebody enjoys their wine or they're a foodie. Um, they like the indulgence. And this again harkens back to that sensual energy that's in sexual tarot, the big star. We've discussed the big star. Also the sign of Aquarius, it doesn't have to be. And I did see the star several times here. So yeah, Aquarian energy. You got a thing for air signs? <laughs> Gemini and Aquarius, yeah. Yeah, but it's again that um, ultimate sense of fulfillment. I want to give the best of myself unto you and be that person who exclusively could do these things to you. And it's only me. You wouldn't need anyone other than me because I fulfill all your desires. That's what it is to reach for the stars. You tried to reach for the stars with this person. If you were with me, you wouldn't need anyone else. Did that ever occur to you? I tried to give you that but you wouldn't let me or it wouldn't happen that way. That star says only one person can do that to you and all else falls to the wayside as nothing cheap and shallow. I know. You wanted to be that one person who unlocked everything for them and then they wouldn't need anyone else. You wouldn't either. Try telling that to somebody who can't differentiate between the stars and just basic carnal desire, conflating the two, not knowing the difference. There wouldn't be a hole in the bucket after that, honey. L. Two L's. Well, that's gnarly. Okay. G. Stingray upside down. Not hiding anymore. So the stingray upright, its natural defense mechanism is to hide. It's a gentle creature, despite its name, the stingray. Um, going along with things as best you can, trying to go with the flow of things. Uh, also Scorpio energy, of course. But it was in the reverse, no longer going with the flow of things. Can't hide anymore, not trying to work with this anymore. You know, um, yeah, there you go. I think that's enough as I say that. Okay. Dragon, that's you. Aries Leo Sag, having healthy fire. The crab is upside down, so some of you, the X might be a cancer, but somebody, again, who just is not in tune with their emotions, uh, denies them, rejects them, um, won't look at them, it's too aggravating, it's too frustrating. Someone who denies their soft side, they might have cancer in their chart, and, but it's not successfully felt or reached or acknowledged um, that somebody who's just not comfortable with their emotions at all. 
There you go. Or won't make progress in their emotions. There you go. Things are more than, oh, I want to have sex with you. To, oh, let's take a look at this. It might mean something deeper. Okay. And let's see her. Oh, yes. Clinging to the comfort zone. Somebody won't get out of their comfort zone about their attitudes around sex, around passion, what it means. They won't accelerate it. They won't learn from it. Um, somebody doubts themselves, lacks confidence, something like that. They learned, again, to associate fire with negativity and that it can't serve a higher purpose. You know, I'm lucky to get what I get kind of thing. I, fuck, I don't know. Deception. An apology for forgiveness. Yeah, we were deceiving. We were deceiving. Somebody, uh, look, I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm going to give you this spiel. There is an obligation here for somebody to apologize for the deception. I see you trying to forgive yourself. I see you trying to come to terms with the fact that you will never fully understood why this happened and why it hurts. You've absorbed that, and you're still going to absorb it. I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm sure... Somebody owes somebody somewhere an apology for the deception. Um, being used, manipulated, not understanding one's sexual energy and how it was playing out. Okay. Should we ask for forgiveness for being deceptive, for not understanding what was going on and how we were making the other person feel? I'm not denying that that's not the case. I'm sure many of you feel like you might be owed an apology or they might feel that way about you. I don't know. It's weird, given the reading. Uh, it was pretty directional, but okay. Regardless, I don't want you to be that person that says, I could just move on if I got an apology because you're going to be waiting a long time. You can't do that. I mean, you can, but you will be one miserable son of a bitch. You have got to move on. And the Aries I'm looking at says that's not a problem for me. So I don't want you to be that Aries who's looking at this and you identify with some of it. But you're like, I would move on, Christina, if they would just give me closure. I hear that bullshit argument a thousand times a day. Closure is beautiful. We should all be so lucky to get some fucking closure. But most of us don't. We give ourselves closure. Everything begins with the self, including forgiveness, including closure. The areas I'm looking at says I have to work really hard, Christina, to forgive myself. I, I love this person and it went into a weird place, man. And I played into it and I still don't fully understand it because I did love this person but I'm conflicted about the intensity of it and how it got toxic. I know I played a part in there and I fucked up. So I see you apologizing to yourself and that's good. You need to forgive yourself. Because there's a good chance that if you are hoping for an apology from this, you'll never get one. It takes someone with maturity to say, I fucked up. I mistreated this. I mistreated us. I thought it was one thing. I saw it as one thing. And I see now I screwed up. I don't expect you to forgive me, but I wanted to put it out there. Okay? That's it. That's called making amends. And that's beautiful. It's beautiful. But if you've realistically lived life, you know how often that happens and you know how often it doesn't happen. This person spends a lot of time trying not to see what's there or trying to feel what's not there. There's missing pieces in here that you tried to fill, but for the right reasons, but it got weird and convoluted and messy. And they see their sexual energy as a threat or a problem. So there might... I'm sure there was deception here, honey. It turned into something toxic between you two. But... I, I don't... I don't want you to wait around for an apology or some sort of sense of forgiveness. Forgive yourself first and everything else will flow through. When other people want to say they're sorry, it's because they need it for themselves. Okay, have you ever had, have you ever done that? Have you ever apologized to someone, not because they needed to hear it, but because you needed to do it? That's what forgiveness is. That's what I mean, everything begins with the self. I've done it. And where I know I've harmed somebody, and I, I'm sorry. This was coming from me. 
and I need to say apologize. I need to apologize for me because that was my fuck up. That was my error, and I need to do it for me. You may not accept my apology. You might tell me to fuck off. You might not forgive me at all. You might tell me to go ahead and burn in hell. That's fine. That's fine. That's your reaction. That's what you're entitled to. But for me, this is what I needed to do. Okay? That's real forgiveness. So you've got to forgive yourself. And they're going to go through whatever they go through. But do not be that person that's like... Because that's deception. You'll be deceiving yourself. I need an apology from them. You might feel that way. And it would feel good. But that doesn't mean you need it. And uh, if anybody ever levels up to that uh, area where they want to say, I need to do this for me, I need to apologize, they might tell me to fuck off, I don't care, that's fine, I gotta do it for me. That's good. And that's beautiful. But I'm also saying, hold yourself to your expectations. Not what you think other people are supposed to do, okay? You'll be a lot happier for it. All right. Follow your own particular alchemy. You have your own particular rhythm and energy in this life. Use it to the best of your abilities. You desire the star so much, then put it towards someone who is actually in the position to receive it and wants to receive it. Okay. Detachment. Yes, I know. You went cold on this person, or they were always cold with you to begin with. I don't know. Regardless, detachment occurred. It's more or less the Eight of Cups. Uh, stability, that's what I'm saying. You, your emphasis here is on stability, so you swung hard in the other direction. You realized how unstable this was and how nonsensical it was to some way, to some degree, and you've emphasized stability ever since. And you've been avoiding this situation. You possibly blocked them, um, sidestepped, avoided, I don't know. Um, honestly, though, given this person's level of avoidance with the justification of the hair font to back it up, that could just as well be them. So it's kind of at a stalemate for right now. If somebody wants to avoid their particular truth, there you go. But either way, avoidance is happening on both sides. I ain't trying to see you. You ain't trying to see me right now. Okay. Nurture, compassion. That's what I'm saying. You need to be kind to yourself. Show yourself compassion. You have work to do. There it is. Mercury, messages, travel, communication for some of you. Some of you have upcoming travel, like I do. Yay! Actually, by the time this comes out, I should be on vacation. I just I just realized that. <laughs> yes, but some of you might receive messages while you're traveling. What that is, I don't know. Um, but just some communication. And it looks like it's a long-arriving message in a bottle. Uh, perhaps it's unexpected or it just took a long time for that communication to come through. Uh, but there you go. Um, that's it. I think that's enough. Okay, honey. I'm happy. It looks like you're in something that's very high functioning and healthy. Emotionally stable, sexually stable, and 3D stable. You showed me that twice with the King of Pentacles and Ace of Pentacles. You're very proud. And in the right ways. You seem to be satisfied on multiple levels. And that makes me very happy for you. And uh, if it hasn't happened yet, it will soon. I don't know, but honey, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't question it twice. So good for you. Good for you. I don't know where that's going to go. You know what's funny? I saw your future through their eyes. That's what's weird. That's how I knew they were watching you. I don't know why I saw your future orientation through their eyes. Other than the fact they have a very strong impression that you indeed are the star and that you're given that good love and energy towards someone else. And it's kind of like that could have been me. It, sorry. That was uh, <laughs> David Bowie's Queen Bitch, which I am extremely familiar with. It's like an anthem song for me. Somebody hears that lyrics and it, I love that song. I fucking love that song. It's like my, like I said, it's one of my personal anthem songs. You know, hey, you have that song that hits you just right, and you're like, that's my song. That, to me, is David Bowie's Queen Bitch. And literally, a line from that song is, it could have been me. 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 And I heard that as an echo. Yeah, it could have been you. I mean, them. It could have been them. It could have been me. Fuck. 
for it to have been them, they had to have taken it seriously to begin with. And not allow their desire to go to a bad place, and etc., etc. But we've discussed all that. What a weird final thought. Hmm. Oh, yeah, it could have been me. It could have been me. Why didn't I say? Why didn't I say? Yeah, why didn't you say? I don't know. To each their own, and we all are blessed and cursed in this life to learn things as we need to learn them. Sometimes you gotta learn shit the hard way, and the higher your denial is, the more you're gonna learn something the hard way. The more you accept the reality for what it is, and you do something about it, you're gonna start learning things the easy way. I'm sorry. That was unexpected. Okay. Put in the comments. I'll see you in approximately two weeks for your three-month overview. I don't necessarily know that I will pick up on the same group of Aries, but we'll see. I will see you for your three months. Again, approximately two weeks. Take care, honey. Congratulations. If it hasn't happened or started yet, it will soon. Take care. Be well.